Hello, I'm Andy Coulson and welcome back to Crisis What Crisis in another Crisis Comforts episode. Short but perfectly formed advice for getting you through the tough times. As regular listeners will know, at the end of our conversations, we ask all our guests for their three crisis comforts, their go-tos for inspiration and strength during the challenging times. And over the years, we've accumulated some incredibly interesting and more importantly, useful tips for anyone who might be feeling the weight of their own problems. Now, I've just had a fascinating conversation with the BBC's diplomatic correspondent, James Landau, about how he has faced both professional and personal crisis during the course of his career. And I urge you to listen to his full episode. But if you're short on time, here's a taster. And remember, you can also listen to all our conversations in full wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Just go to the top of our homepage at crisiswhatcrisis.com for links. Many thanks for listening. Before uh, we let you go, I'm going to ask you for your crisis comforts. Mm -hmm. So these are three things. Can't be another person is the only rule that you rely on um, uh, during the, the difficult days. Um, what will yours be? The first thing I've referred to before, which is a pen. Write everything down. I know that I'm, uh, like many journalists, uh, we, I'm a scatterbrain and um, I can hardly remember what I was doing yesterday. So write it down because when you're in the thick of it, uh, it is so easy to forget something. Uh, and so just write it down, write it down, write it down. Also because the process of writing something down cr automatically creates an element of order. You've written a list of things. It might not be in the, in the right order, but it's, but it's become a list, it's become a thing, okay. And so it gives it uh, something that's tangible. So that's, I think, the first thing to do because um, also the process of writing helps you engage your brain. Mm. Um, you know, I had a teacher who always used to say, engage brain before operating mouth, um, and it's good advice for everybody. Uh, and I think that, you know, if you've got any kind of moment, step back, write that, write it down. Even if it's just, you know, you've taken the call, crikey, OK, write it down. What have I just been told? What I can do about it? And just, it's, it starts the thinking process. So I think that's the first thing I'd say. Um, the second thing I'd say is probably change your location. And this is the pot into which you put that kind of, you know, take a deep breath, go for a walk, um, do something different, just to physically remove yourself from the crisis for a bit. Um, and if that means, you know, removing yourself from the telephone, the way you, you had the information or the computer that you got, it's just, um, you know, don't, you know, remove yourself from that screen that you're scrolling through and, you know, just, just physically remove yourself. Look at the horizon, take a deep breath, um, and you can do that in lots and lots of different ways. But I think the physical relocation is, is an incredibly useful thing. I find that whenever I've got a problem, going for a walk, you know, with a dog or going for a run or something like that, just triggers the subconscious. And your subconscious sorts the problem mm. while, you're, while you're dealing with it. There are lots of people who speak about this. You know, and I think that, so that certainly works for me. So I think relocation would be my, my second thing. The third thing... Um, I would say is um, sailing. For me, that's that's my. Um, whenever people do a, a pastime, you know, whatever it is, golf or something like that, it's about doing something. That you've got to think about something. You know, putting a, you know, hitting a ball. Or with sailing, it's you know, am I pointing in the right direction? Is is the sail set in the right place? Am I aware of my environment? So you're, you've got stuff to occupy the front of your brain, but also. Uh, I get huge aesthetic pleasure from sailing. It's, for me, it's not about racing around cans and, you know, I mean, I've done that, but kind of, for me, sailing is an aesthetic pleasure. It's about enjoying the sight of a well-set sail that is driving your craft mm. as efficiently as possible. And, you know, I know, you know, the sail can be set right or it can be not, and you can tweak it and fiddle with it. But when it's set right and you're driving the boat at the maximum power you can, you know, that's satisfying. Um, it's the sound of water passing along a boat's hull at night. Um, you know, watching the phosphorescence of, of, a, of a, you know, a, a dolphin or even the back of the craft. Um, the satisfaction of a nicely judged maneuver or a nicely judged piece of, of navigation that's got you from A to B, thinking about a few tides and, and currents and things like that. That is an intensely aesthetic pleasure and it is one that, for me, calms the waters, you know, whatever. I mean, everybody has their own drug. <clears throat> for me, that's it. James Ander, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. 
If you've enjoyed this conversation with James, please do give us a rating and a review. It really helps. And if you hit subscribe wherever you download your podcast from, you will find loads more useful crisis conversations. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok, and you can watch the full episodes on YouTube. Just search for Crisis What Crisis podcast. You can also find full transcripts of this and every episode on our website, crisiswhatcrisis.com. Thanks again for joining us. Reason to walk.